Gabby, let's go, come on. Welcome to virtual worship with the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church, Lot Carey. I am the Reverend Brenda Curtin Harewood, Superintendent Pastor and President of the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church, Lot Carey. I pray today that God would bless you as you worship with us in this virtual space. Thank you for joining us. Wherever you are joining us from, we ask God's special blessing upon you and your loved ones. We want to encourage you that if you are joining us via Facebook, that you would like and share this post and that you would encourage your friends and neighbors to participate in this worship. If you are worshiping with us on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel and share the link. We want to also encourage you to make contact with us by sending us a message through Messenger on Facebook, or you can send us an email. Our email address is info at gmbc-lotcary.org or you can call us. The number is 592-227-7455. Please know that persons from our evangelism and from our prayer team are always available to pray with you and to encourage you. We want to also remind you that we have recommenced worshiping in our local churches. So please join us for worship in the local church closest to where you live. If you are on the East Coast, then you can worship with us at the Calvary Baptist Church in Bedford, Washington. If you're in the Pomeroon, then you can worship with us at Abrams Creek. If you are on the Linden Suzdike Highway, then you can join us at Long Creek, Yarra Cabra, or at Kuru Kururu. And for those persons in Georgetown, can join us at Mount Zion in Camberville. Our services in all of our congregations except Long Creek begins at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. Persons at Long Creek will begin worship at 11 a.m. We also want to encourage you to continue to join us for prayer and Bible study on Zoom. Remember, we meet every Wednesday at 7, 7 p.m. for Bible studies. And we meet every Saturday morning at 5 a.m. for prayer. So we look forward to praying, studying, and worshiping with you. 
Today I will be serving as your liturgist and preacher. Our sacred artist is Sister Megan Hazel, and she is a member of the Calvary Baptist Church in Better Fawakti. We want to extend special thanks to all of you for your faithful stewardship. Thank you for giving your time, your talent, and your resources to this part of the kingdom. It's our prayer that God would bless you and that God will continue to pour into you. Remember, if you want to make a contribution, a financial contribution to the GMBC or to one of our local churches, then you can do so by MMG. You can make a direct deposit into the local church account, or you can arrange a pickup or a drop off. Of course, if you're worshiping in person, you can take it to the congregation. For our friends who are in the global community, you can support us by sending money through Zelle, Western Union, MoneyGram, or you can make an international wire. Again, thank you for being so generous. We want to encourage you as we learn to live with this pandemic that you would do your part to prevent the spread and to prevent yourself and your family from being sick. We know that the best strategy is to be vaccinated. And so if you're not yet vaccinated, we encourage you to do so. And if you are living in a community where vaccinations are available for children, we want to encourage you to get your children vaccinated as well. We believe that vaccinations help to save lives. So we thank you for worshiping with us. And now we ask you that you would prepare your hearts and mind as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. There's nothing worth more that can ever come close. Nothing can compare here I live in hope, your presence, Lord. Have tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. 
Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. We give God thanks for Sister Megan Hazel and for her sharing her gift of song with us. Today is the first Sunday of the month of February. And as is traditional in the GMBC congregations, we are going to participate in our communion service. For those of you who are part of the GMBC network and are not worshiping in person, we invite you to this virtual table. We also extend an invitation to believers everywhere. If you are a believer in Christ, we want you to know that you are welcome to God's table, God's table of grace. So as you participate in this virtual ordinance, I want to invite you to have some bread and a beverage ready so that you can be a part of this ordinance. We're going to give you a few minutes to get ready. And while we do that, I'm going to extend um, birthday and anniversary greetings to all persons in the GMBC network who are celebrating a birthday, an anniversary, or another special milestone today or throughout the month of February. We want to ask God's richest blessing upon you as you celebrate and that God will keep you and cover you. We extend best wishes not only to our GMBC family, but all you who are joining us, who are celebrating today. We pray God's richest blessing upon you as you mark your milestone. And now God's table is ready. Let us keep the feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God, for it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For, for you are the source of light and life. And you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with the company of heaven, who forever sing to the hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy. Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through your prophets, and above all in your word made flesh, Jesus your Son, who you sent to be the Savior of the world and to redeem the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error to truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And on the night before he died for us, our Lord took bread, lifted it to heaven, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And when he had given thanks in like manner, he took the cup and gave it to his disciples saying, drink this, all of you. This in remembrance as a covenant of, of the new covenant, knowing that my blood was shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup do this in remembrance of me therefore according to god's command we remember christ's death we proclaim his resurrection and we await his coming in glory and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord for your creation of this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, that you would send your Holy Spirit in our midst and that you would bless these gifts and set them apart for this holy use and purpose. Unite us and sanctify us by your Holy Spirit and in the fullness of time, put all things in subjugation under Christ and bring us to the heavenly country where all your saints may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Let us eat together, knowing that God's body, Christ's body was broken for us. That same night, he took the cup, lifted it to heaven, asked God blessing on it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink. This cup represents my blood, which is shed for the remission of your sin. Also know that you, I will not drink with you again until I drink with you in paradise. For I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. Let us drink in faith, giving God thanks for the shedding of his blood and for the hope of an eternal home.
Let us pray. Precious God, we thank you for this time of fellowship around your table. Now bless us and grant us new strength for the journey that we might be to the world examples of what you have done for us that we might portray to the world a Christ that has given all that we might have life eternal. Hear our prayer as we ask all these things with thanksgiving through the name of Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us when we pray to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen let us continue to worship the Lord in song as Sister Megan leads us in another song of worship. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Oh, comforter and friend, how we need your touch again holy spirit rain down rain down let your power fall let your voice be heard come and change our hearts as we stand on your word Holy Spirit, rain down. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven. Open it wide over your church and over your lives, Holy Spirit, rain down, Holy Spirit, rain down, rain. Comforter and friend, how we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word, Holy Spirit, rain down. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know. What God has in store, so open up heaven, open it wide, over your church and over your lives, Holy Spirit, rain down. We give God thanks for. Sister Megan Hazel, and for her stewardship through Saul. We pray that God will continue to bless her and to use her for God's glory as she makes herself available 
for kingdom service. I want to invite you to join me in our scripture reading. Our scripture reading for today is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, reading from verses 1 through 13. I want to encourage you to reread the scripture at home and also to take some time to read the lectionary readings for this week. The common lectionary readings, we are in year C, and this is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Let us hear God's word. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty. And then the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And the one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke, and I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. And the seraphs touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if the tenth part remain in it, it will be burnt again, like the terebinth or the oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is the stump. The word of God 
for the people of God. Let us give thanks. Let us pause as we quietly meditate on God's word. Amen. Friends, I pray that God's grace and peace that comes to us from God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit would be multiplied to each and every one of you. I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters of the GMBC Lot Carey. And I invite you to meditate with me as we consider the text that was just read, found in Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. In our text, the prophet beholds a glorious vision of the living God and receives his commission to go and speak God's word. Isaiah sees a vision in which God is high and lifted up. God, the Lord of all, is exalted above all creation. However, it is important to grasp that he sees this vision in the year King Uzziah died. Uzziah enjoyed a long and prosperous reign of approximately 52 years, according to the book of Chronicles, chapter 26. He received an overall positive assessment. The book of Chronicles said he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And as a leader, he provided military strength in a tumultuous period. And the kingdom grew and prospered. But when he became strong, he also grew proud. And this was to his own destruction. For he became unfaithful to the Lord. And he entered God's temple to burn incense on the altar of incense. Kings were prohibited from performing priestly duties. But Isaiah, Uzziah, tried to assert, usurp the authority of the priests. And so Yahweh struck him with leprosy, cutting him off from the temple. Because of his leprosy, King Uzziah became an unclean outcast and he had to secede the throne to his son. And so he reigned simultaneously. He continued as king, but under the leadership of his son. But Uzziah was the only king that the prophet Isaiah knew, and obviously who he admired. But the scripture says that when the king died, he, Isaiah, saw the Lord. As he grappled with Uzziah's death, he received a new vision. Isaiah sees God seated on the throne 
as he grappled with this loss, God does not show him fear. God does not show him chaos. God does not show him an empty throne. But God reveals himself, reminding Isaiah that the true king, the king of kings is bigger than the best king. And that only as we submit ourselves to the king of kings can we truly be in God's will. Up until now, Isaiah was blinded by the, the king and so he had never seen this great king, God. We all have our moments when the people, the things that are central in our lives fall apart. For some of us, we have our King Uzziah died moments when we lose the job. The job that defined us, that we never introduced ourselves unless we said our job title. For some of us, our King Uzziah died moment came when we got that medical news that we were diagnosed with a degenerative or a terminal illness. For some of us, King Uzziah died when we got that dreaded phone call. For some of us, it was when the person who we did not vote for became the leader and we have to learn to live and work with them. These moments, these Uzziah moments in our lives help us to cut to the quick, to cut to the bone, and to ask ourselves, in who do I really trust? Is it a job? Do I really believe that Jehovah is Jehovah Rapha? And that he is bigger than my medical condition? Do I know that that phone call with sad news is not the end of the world because God cares for me and will not forsake me in my hour of greatest need? Do I understand that the leader who I did not vote for is not the end of the world, that God is supreme? And that every leader is under God's subjection. We all know that it is often easy for circumstances and for our emotions to cloud our view of God. But this text simply reminds us that all other kings and thrones are insufficient because they will die. And only the king of kings, only Yahweh, lives and reigns forever. Isaiah sees Yahweh sitting on his heavenly throne with the earth as his footstool and with the train of his robe filling the temple. The temple is the place where God and humanity meets. In attendance to God are angels, these strange beings with six wings. Yahweh receives the praise of heaven. As they say, holy, 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 Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of glory. God 
is exalted. God is holy. And so Isaiah responds. He's amazed. He is, you know, we all long for our revelation of God, but sometimes when it comes, we are not prepared for it. And you would think that Isaiah comes face to face with the glory of God, that he would shout and that he would rejoice. But when he came into the presence of God, he was humbled. And he acknowledged that he was an unclean person that dwelt and worked with unclean people. And God understood. And so God extends to Isaiah grace. And he sends the angels, the, the servants come with a coal and put it on his unclean tongue and cleanses him. In our moments of when we don't know what to say, when we feel forsaken and down, God extends to us mercy and compassion and grace. I remember when my mom was diagnosed with a brain tumor and we were told that she had weeks to months it was so sudden. We were not prepared. But God extended to us grace and mercy and compassion. Family, friends, members of our church community showed up and rallied with us and reminded us by their presence that God's grace is sufficient. And so having heard Isaiah's confession, God sends the seraphim with a burning coal and presses it on his mouth. And he receives forgiveness. God extends to us forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Christ comes to us in our hour of deepest need and extends to us not judgment, but mercy and grace. And so the angel extends to Isaiah grace and forgiveness and absolution. No matter how great our sin, God speaks to us. God's word comes to us to burn away our sin. Therefore, let us rejoice and know that God's grace is sufficient. And after Isaiah had been cleansed, he hears the voice of God. God says, Who will go for us? So far in the scripture, we, we see an act of worship. We see absolution. And now we hear God's commission. To this point, we have only heard the voices of Isaiah and the seraphims. But now the king of kings finally speaks and he says 
who shall I send? Who will go for us? God, Yahweh has a message that requires a messenger. Someone needs to go and tell God's word. And Isaiah is overjoyed by God's grace and filled with wonders and shouts. Here am I, Lord. Send me. That is the right response for every forgiven sinner who has been turned by God into a saint should say, here I am, Lord, send me. Send me that I might take the news of God's love and mercy. Send me that I might help others to hear. Send me, Lord, here am I. Send me. As Isaiah did not hesitate. But then as he listened to the command, God sends him. But does not promise him that it will be easy. He says, as you go, you might not be heard. You might not be noticed. You might not be honored. And Isaiah says, for how long, Lord? How long shall I respond and not be assured that what I am doing is being received? And the Lord says to him, don't worry about how you are received. Just be faithful to the commission. How long, Lord? How long? Oh, Lord, how long? Does Isaiah ask. And the Lord says, be faithful as long as it takes. Be faithful until my judgment is complete. Friends, God calls us. God sends us. God cleanses and forgives, forgives us and commissions us that we might go and take the message of God's love and God's hope and God's mercy and God's judgment. Do you hear God's call? Can you say like the prophet Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord, send me. Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your body. Today you have fed us with the spiritual food of bread and wine. Now send us into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Go now and trust in God's mercy for your strength. Proclaim the good news wherever God calls you. And do not set yourselves apart from others, but be all things to all people for the sake of the gospel. And may God give you strength and freedom of an eagle. May Christ be the bread that nourishes and renews you. And may the Holy Spirit 
be the rising wind beneath your wings. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. Remember, if you have made a decision for the Lord and you want to be encouraged, call us or send us a message by email or by messenger. We look forward to hearing from you and may God richly bless you.